Hello there and welcome back to my home sewing studio. My name is Ann Tilly and today I have a problem that you might relate to. Your favorite t-shirt that you've worn for years now has unsightly pit stains. Ugh! This is many an early death to beautiful vintage tees. So I really don't want to throw this shirt away. I want to continue wearing it. So I had an idea for a creative solution. Now, we all know baseball tees and baseball tees are a little bit different in the fact that they have an angled seam so they have a slightly different look to the sleeve. This is also called a raglan sleeve. And I thought if I took my original shirt and cut the sleeve and sewed a new baseball sleeve, I could get rid of this unsightly part and reclaim this garment so that I can continue wearing it. Let me show you how I'm gonna do it. To begin, I need to remove this collar. So I'm going to start by seam ripping the original serged seam. If you have one of those support binding pieces going across the back of your collar, you'll need to remove that first to remove the whole collar. And this can be pretty easy because they're usually sewn with a chain stitch. So if you pull the loopy side just right, you can get it all undone pretty quickly. Next, I'll fold the shirt in half and figure out where my new sleeve seam will be. You can reference a baseball tee shirt that you already have, or it's really just a matter of finding a line from the bottom of the armhole to kind of the upper side of the neck hole opening. Now, remember, you're going to need some seam allowance, so give yourself at least 3 eighths of an inch. Once you've separated your sleeve, you can cut it open. This will now become your pattern for your new sleeve. Pick out your fabrics that you want for your new sleeve. I went with two different color knit fabrics that were a similar weight to my original shirt. Lay them out and then put your ratty old sleeve on top. Make sure that it is straight and as flat as possible. Now, the original sleeve had additional shaping because it has those two seams there and you can kind of see the way that the fabric is kind of rippling. And a baseball sleeve doesn't account for that type of shaping. So to compensate for that and to keep my sleeve from becoming too tight, I'm gonna give myself a little additional seam allowance on those front and back angled seams. So here, I'm just gonna cut at 3 quarters of an inch as opposed to a normal 3 eighths of an inch. And then for the top part where it's going to connect to the neckline, I just cut it into a point and we'll figure it out later once we've actually attached it to the shirt. Before starting to sew, you'll need to seam rip this top little bit of the side seams so that you can access that new angled seam on the front and back panels. I'll line up the bottom of my angles and sew from the bottom up since we didn't quite resolve that neckline just yet. And as long as I lay the fabrics evenly, I don't really worry about putting any pins in, but that's just my personal preference. For this project, I'm using an industrial serger, which is really the best tool for when you're sewing knitwear. It allows the fabric to stretch and doesn't pop while you're sewing the garment or wearing the garment. You can totally use a straight stitch though and just make it a really short stitch length so that it has less room to pop or do a zigzag stitch if you don't have a serger. Once the front and back shoulder seams are sewn, now you're ready to close up that part of the side seam that you opened as well as closing up the sleeve. Now that our sleeves are sewn together, it's really easy to true up that neckline. I 
I made my life easy and found another old shirt that I wasn't wearing anymore and pilfered the collar off of that. You could also make a collar from scratch using one of the fabrics that you used for your sleeves. In that case, you would cut a rectangle that's the length of your original collar, sew it into a circle and fold it in half and treat it in the same way. Typically collars are made with a ribbed fabric, but you can use any kind of knit fabric. Once you have your collar ready to go, it's simply a matter of stretching it to fit your neckline and then pinning it evenly into place. This is definitely a place that I use pins. Now you can easily sew the collar to the neckline and here I'm really making sure to keep a pin cushion next to me as I work because I'm trying really hard to get out of the habit of putting pins in my mouth. Once you read enough horror stories about that, you definitely don't want to be doing that. Okay, so the last step is to hem our new sleeves. So I'm going to use my home cover stitch machine which is literally designed for hemming knitwear. It has a straight stitch look on the top and then a loopy serger-like stitch on the bottom, um, but it doesn't cut like the way a serger does. And it is a really great tool for making your home knitwear garments look really professional, but they can be expensive and they are kind of a pain to get set up just right. I definitely had my own frustrations with my machine, but then once I got the hang of it, got it set up right, it has been working wonderfully for me and I really enjoy it. If you don't have a cover stitch machine, you can certainly use that straight stitch with the shorter stitch length or a zigzag stitch, or you could even just leave it raw because a lot of knit fabrics don't really fray. It's totally up to you. And that's it. You're done. Okay, so that wraps up our quick afternoon upcycle, and I dare say that this looks so much better than it did when we started. I um, used two different scrap knit fabrics that I found in my studio as well as a third shirt, but you could get all your pieces from the one shirt and use the body of the shirt to make your sleeves. And if you don't have a cover stitch machine, like a lot of people don't, you could utilize the front hem of the shirt as your new sleeve hem. In that case, you would take the sleeve pattern and line it up with that and cut from there. It even would be cool to add a little like edging like this on this, kind of like a ringer tee, you know? Um, but yeah, I was tempted to, to make a black uh, sleeves, but I'm really happy that I pushed myself and did something a little bit more funky. I look forward to wearing this shirt. I know that um, a lot of you may not have sergers or cover stitch machines in your home to work with, but if you're interested in making your own clothes, I highly encourage you to look into purchasing a serger because it is just a great way to sew stretchy knitwear and Lord knows that we like wearing the stretchy stuff, right? So, um, you know, I'm happy to make a video kind of helping you walk through how to purchase one of those. I don't know. Let me know. I hope you found some enjoyment out of this video. Please like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any creative t-shirt upcycling projects and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.